I, I, I don't understand you all. Why does this have 5,000 views? Why do I have 143 subscribers when I haven't posted in months? I, I just... What? Uh, Alright, whatever. Hi, yes, it's me, the bitch who runs the channel. I, uh, wanna get something out of the way here real quick. I want, I have a Ko-Fi now. I am in a financial state situation where I cannot officially go, like, go out and work due to disability services still, uh, filing me under the official disability register. I'm doing this in the first, like, 30 seconds because I always droned it out to the end in other recordings. Woo, yeah, this took several takes for me to just go on and rant. Uh, speaking of ranting, welcome to a uh, basic update video. Uh, just talking about what's going on with this channel, what's going on with me and my projects. Yeah, let's get started simple. So we're going to save the big ones, uh, aka like Sodor the End and uh, the Badlands for last. Uh, but... First off, again, I just want to say thank you all for 143 subscribers. Thank you for literally all the attention that all of this has gotten. Like, some of the stuff that I've made have been pretty low effort. I mean, I used basically an automatic panning shot in uh, a 100, the 125th anniversary of Edward's build date thing. So, yeah. Um... Let's get started with pretty simple stuff. Uh, let's start about with the projects that I haven't really talked about too much, uh, either here or on Twitter, uh, since I conceptualized them. Uh, first off is uh, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's SFM animation, focusing more around the time between FNAF 3 and uh, FNAF 6, aka when Springtrap went from, you know, Springtrap to uh, Afton. Yeah, peanut thing. Uh, still, uh, it's been on hold for quite a while, actually. Uh, I just didn't find the time or, like, enjoyment in, like, writing a full script for it. it it's basically an alternate take on my, or it's an alternate, my take on the FNAF timeline. And this is, a, it has one key twist, though, that William begins to remorse after FNAF 3. So... Basically, uh, yeah, it's part. The, it's just basically a part of the Andrea Plex. I'll discuss this a little bit later when we come to the big stuff. But uh, yeah, it's on hold at the moment. I don't have any motivation to really animate because it just like it tortured me to like no extent. I, I hate it. I might animate a little bit more if like security breach maps get ported to SFM soon. Because I do want to do something related to Security Breach. I wanted to show my appreciation for it. Like, it's an amazing game and shit like that. But, anyways. Yeah, like, I've struggled with SFM even since the Daily Question VHS thing that happened. I struggled to animate a fan spinning. So, yeah. That is something for sure. Uh, moving on. Uh, we come to the Thelmic line. Uh, yeah. The Tillamook Line is another project that I've just kind of, like, fallen out of over time. Like, for some, I, like, I love the concept and I love what I've done with it so far and I really do want to do more with it. Especially because there's, like, new detailing here that I'm going to talk about later in the Badlands section. But, uh, so, like, it's just, like, man, it, it really is just kind of, like, like, a ton of shit that, like, I have stockpiled about the Andrea Plex and shit like that. I, I'm just trying to start it up, but whatever. Like, Tilda McLean is, like, motivation-wise, I've just kind of fallen a little bit out of it. Uh, doing the Tilda McLean would require a lot of, like, stock footage and, like, stock sound effects for, like, actual, like, American locomotives and stuff and not Thomas and Friends sound effects. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of a dead end at the moment. Like, I don't want to, like, compile all the sound effects I'll need for, like, that kind of stuff. But, uh, hopefully I do hope to bring it back. The biggest ambition I have for it is to write a full story around the Tillamook line and that kind of stuff. And show what more the universe has. But, uh, other than that, it's just kind of at hold right now. But, yeah. 
moving forward, we have... Uh, moving forward to the next series that I announced at the Cinema line, we have Sodor the End. Yeah, Sodor the End. Yeah, you remember that awesome... Remember that trailer I did with uh, music by the old guards band, by the way, with Duncan Gets Spookier? I, like, legit love that sound. That, that literally, it's just like, it's perfect. It's just the Sodor the End theme. And now, it's... First off, I just want to point out, it's not a Fallout thing. No, no, it's not a Fallout thing. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything related to Fallout. Sodor Fallout and that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe. Anymore. Still. Uh, Sodor the End is a... Uh, basically, I'm just going to drop some details about it right now. Sodor the End takes place in late 2008, early 2000... Well, the first episode takes place in late 2008, early 2009. Uh, like a couple months after the railway has closed. Yeah, the, this is an AU where the Northwestern Railway has shut its doors. Uh, how original. Uh, yeah, uh, it's basically, the reasoning is actually a lot more logical than, like, mm, stuff happening there. But, uh, the railway basically closed because of a large project by the British, like, transport division to revitalize the roads on the island of Sodor for, like, modern traffic, as they were, like, as they still had, like, one-lane roads and that kind of stuff, like, unmarked roads and that kind of stuff, and, like, leading up to major towns. So, basically, the island got a bit of an upgrade in road and infrastructure and buildings and that kind of stuff. So, there are a lot more, like, big companies there now. Uh, still, uh, some parts of the island are still operational. Uh, the only ones I'm gonna drop are the ones that were shown uh, the ones that were shown in the trailer, I mean. Uh, the Ironworks is still running with Ari and Bert as seen. Uh, Mavis is still taking a stone down from Anofa Quarry on the tramway. And, uh, Brendam Docks is still in operation. As well as the Clay Pits as shown with Bill and Ben. Uh... Again, uh, it's just kind of a thing that I'm doing to explain my personal AU, the Andreaplex, like the FNAF thing. Uh, and speaking of which, I might as well just get to the punch and talk about it. So, the Andreaplex is my personal AU I've had on the back burner for like a long time. I originally was writing a story to detail the back story of Andrea called One of a Kind. And, uh, yeah, that kind of fell through because I wanted to rewrite basically everything about the story because it focused on one of the timelines that i really kind of just like like the first like several chapters kind of focused on one part of on one timeline that i really despised uh like for a couple of reasons mainly the fact that I, it was part of the time when i was a uh, part of the mlp my little pony fandom and it just kind of like focused on making it like a huge mlpoc rather than actually something i could really work with and i'm planning on rewriting a couple of things around that but yeah i've like struggled to explain the andrea plex for years like i have not been able to, but I will tell you that most of my series actually takes place within the Andreaplex. Uh, the, uh, basically everything I mentioned here takes place in it. The FNAF animation, that's just the backstory to the FNAF part of the timeline. Uh, the daily questioning, that's the future part of the FNAF timeline set at, set on the date that was shown in the title of the video. So to the end, that's just the backstory of the Thomas related part of the timeline. Uh, the, and the Badlands? Oh, that's just that's just another part of uh, the Andreaplex that happened recently. And the Tillamook line? That's just based. That was just basically current events at that time. Uh, but speaking of the big one, let's move on to the big one. All right, here we go. The big one. It's time. Welcome to if you're stuck around this long. Good for you, you're gonna get some really big insights here right, into the production of the Badlands. Let's start with the thing I mentioned earlier. Or maybe I did in this report. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I'm gonna say it anyways here. Uh, basically, when I was working at Walmart as a card pusher, I barely had any time for personal projects. I, I worked five hour workdays, uh, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
and uh, after three weeks I quit due to, like, it literally causing me intense, like, physical stuff that I think I mentioned earlier. I'm not sure. I don't listen to my recordings and stuff. This is all one big recording again, ranting. But the Badlands was, unfortunately, a victim of rushing. Uh, the thing was, we had a, uh, me and the collaborator, me and the collaborator before, uh, Maryland's Travels on Twitter, Fleetwood VO here on YouTube, and, uh, well, who I'm gonna call Viv, cause that's my nickname for them. If you use it, I will skin you alive. Uh, yeah, basically, I rushed it, like, hard. I, we had a script at that point, but we had a script long before I got, like, we had a script and I was ready to get it done. Ready to finally get the Badlands, like, under production and underway. But, uh, well, you know what they say, all toasters toast toast, or something like that. But I was, I was legit toasted out from that. It was legit just a fucking mess. I rushed production on the Badlands so hard. I just kind of focused on getting one scene done as fast as possible. Didn't use multiple recordings so I could compare and choose one that I really liked. I just kind of forced myself to keep going forward and not look back at anything. Well, the Badlands episode two, the original prospect for it was it was going to start the uh, trend of videos. Uh, an actual, like, fully fledged video thing for the Badlands. Like, I could actually make motion on the screen instead of just screen shots with... The best analogy for the first episode of the Badlands is it basically just was just kind of a audio book with pictures. Uh, like, one of those read-along stories that you had from your kid, from your childhood, like on DVDs, you had like a read-along book or something. It, the Badlands was basically that at first. And, like, I was thinking, hey, I want to do a fully fledged video production because I've actually done that kind of stuff before with the 125th anniversary for Edward video. I've done it with several other things, but uh, thinking on it now, it's just kind of, like, it's just not my production style for the Badlands. I'd rather do the picture book styling because then I can actually do some, like, bigger edits and make some larger things uh, compatible with the video. It'd be cool. And it would fit the first episode, and since it did so well, obviously, why I'm making this thing, uh, I'd obviously, it, it would break kind of a tradition. It'd break a kind of thing there. Still, basically, everything is done and ready for the Badlands. Uh, the Badlands, uh, episode two, I mean, it's just kind of a, it's been delayed due to motivation and that kind of stuff but uh going back quick to the uh walmart uh job thing uh i was really unsatisfied with it after i once i quit my job which was causing me too much stress to even basically be happy uh i literally just was like i was really upset with how it had come out it looked terrible the shots were boring everything basically around it was boring it was rushed it basically didn't have the level of quality that i wished it had but um yeah uh, i'm planning on redoing basically everything i made in the badlands episode two uh, i might however like thinking on it but future plans for the badlands is basically as such i might stick to the tradition of like for bigger scenes and stuff like that i'll probably use or for like scenes with like not too much happening i might use the, the screenshot technique but uh, mainly i'm going to probably like for some th scenes i'm going to use a video for like some of the motion, like the trap, some traveling montage type things, I might use a video and stuff, but overall I think I'm gonna focus on doing it like the first episode. Uh, uh, which, I mean, 
I might remake as well with video and stuff. I, I really like undecided at this point. Like I have several concepts on the table I might do and stuff. But overall, it's just kind of a waiting game or something. But uh, I can assure you that the Badlands 2 is underway. And uh, uh, since you have been uh, so patient, and I thank you for that. Uh, since you all have been like patient and shit, I, I feel like some of you have been waiting for some of the projects to be done here. But uh, because you guys have been so patient, I'm going to reveal like... A detail here like but, but there are a couple details I will I'm gonna reveal here that I'm happy to disclose right now uh, first off uh, the Badlands is being told from a it was in the past perspective as noted with uh, the Twitter poll I did a while back uh, check out my Twitter too it's in the description as we get all the updates on what I'm doing and if the projects are on hold or pause or something like that um, but another detail I want to share is uh, that, uh, well, Edward ain't alone out there. I, I mean, of course he's not alone. He has the passengers and his crew and the guard and all that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, he is not the only locomotive out there. Obviously that is true because of the whistle and the stuff there awesome dramatic pause for effect but obviously this true for the whistle in the second trailer uh but i guess i can indeed reveal something here uh, uh there is something out there that will be, be causing harm to edward and whatever whoever else is out there in the future uh I can't disclose too much about it, but it's certainly something. Uh, a beast is the best way to refer to it, but it it really is just it. But I think I probably ramble rambled on for too long. It's <laughs> like looking at the recording; it's like seventeen thirty. Like, geez, I have a lot to say, apparently. But, uh, yeah, the, another couple of small tidbits that you might have heard me act for Splodge in uh, Sith Destroyers, uh, Thomas and the Magic Railroad rewrite or something thing. Yeah, like, that's gonna be cool. I'm working on a voice. I might work on a voice demo reel in the future if, if I can do that. Still. Uh, uh, yeah, that should probably be it, honestly. Like, this has been a long time coming. Again, I am, like, dead ass, even more surprised than most would be at, like, the doubling of my channel's growth practically overnight, because I didn't see no change. I had the fuck did the Badlands get 5,000 views. Why is this the most popular thing? But, uh, yeah, uh, one more tidbit, uh, I have about the Badlands before we go, before I finally sign off, plug some sites and stuff. Uh, yeah, the Badlands was originally meant to be something of a dare, basically. I saw a tweet, I don't remember who it was from, but it said, Thomas A. used Thomas A. Use where no one dies challenge impossible. I was just basically like, watch me, and created the Badlands. So, uh, one more, this is actually canon. Uh, no one will die in the Badlands. No one on the, like, heroes side will die, basically. Yeah. Or, no one will die. That's basically the premise. Uh, yeah. So, and of course, there was obvious, uh, inspiration from Sodor Fallout with uh, Edward running away from something very explosive. Yeah, originally I took a token from Fallout for, with the chase with uh, Edward's escape as I so like to call it now. And uh, yeah, again, and there's another thing about the uh, the Badlands runaway theme 
was originally meant to be a theme for the original pilot. Uh, there, I was thinking of two pilots. Uh, the first pilot was uh, the first pilot was the originally remaking the the runaway scene on Twitter with a lot more added content, a lot more stuff going on, and then adding a scene where James runs away from a massive dust cloud coming straight towards him. That's why there's a massive dust cloud and James going the opposite direction of the dust cloud. Yeah, it's it, that pilot was scrapped in favor of the uh, first episode of, that is currently up now, with uh, Edward making it to the other side of the tunnel. Uh, but yeah, that is basically all I have to say. Jesus Christ, I have rambled for 20 fucking minutes. 21 minutes, Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, but thank you again, everyone, for the support on basically everything that I've done here. Again, my Ko-Fi, my co my Ko-Fi is linked in the description. Uh, please go support me there if you can. I'm in a situation where I really, really need it. Uh, um, there's also my Twitter down there for basically updates on everything that's going down. Uh, I'm not providing my Discord because. I don't have a Discord server, even though I probably should finally clean up the one that I actually made. But, again, thank you. If you're still here, thank you for watching and shit. Sorry for rambling for 20 minutes of your time. This is going to be hell to edit. Uh, the post-production note here, probably. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Again, like, thank you for, like, basically everything. I will uh, talk to you all, or uh, you'll probably hear me in some things in the future, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, thank you everybody for, uh, well, like, being here. Uh, I'm gonna do one more quick ramble before we leave. Uh, this channel was originally meant to just be a fucking gaming channel. I originally wanted to do it as a gaming channel inspired by like some dude named HB Ian from like a, the early Minecraft days and like originally it was named Andy and Adopolis. Another character from there was like Adopolis. Like it was like 50 ways to five ways to pull your friends of Minecraft or something like that. That's uh, for some reason I was like a fanboy of that kind of shit. But uh, yeah, again, like it's come this far. Uh, to see, like, this kind of appreciation for what I do is just kind of validating, honestly. But I'm not going to do it like an unhealthy validation thing. But still, all right, I've, I've rambled for, like, fucking 23 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. All right, I'm going to do stuff. I'm going to go edit this. Uh, yeah, the, you're, you're, if you're hearing this, then I've already edited it. And uh, the, thank you again for watching. Twitter and Ko-Fi are in the description. Please donate if you can. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will, uh, well, I guess I'll speak to y'all soon enough. And I love you.